guys. Yes. Yes. Look at this. This is a fan. Why it's too big? And actually, it's a wind turbine. The wind turbine is actually one of the type of the turbine. So basically, turbine is a rotary mechanical device that extracts energy from a fluid flow and it converts into a useful work. So the work produced by a turbine can also be used by generating electrical power when it combined with the generator. The turbine is actually a turbo machine with at least one moving pipe which we call it a rotor assembly and the rotor assembly we call it as a shaft or a drum with plates attached attached to it oh. so the earliest turbines actually there are two uh, which are water wheels turbine yeah, and no, I know another one water wheels yeah oh, right like water wheels turbine and oh. wind wheels turbine the, 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 okay. huh. oh i see is there any other types of turbine that you guys know actually there are four types Oh, all of them. Oh, okay. Oh. Let me explain. Oh, you know. Ah, okay. yeah. Of course, you know. Okay. So basically, um, a turbine has four types, which is a uh, steam, winds, gas, and water. Okay. Remember yeah. that. Can you guys tell me more about all those turbine that you mentioned before? I really curious about all of that. Oh, of course. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, before I forget, so uh, actually the four yes. types that I mentioned uh before that before this, uh, apply the same principle but specific design differs sufficiently to merit separately uh description. Oh, okay. For the steam turbine, as you can see here, this. So the turbine are driving. Driven by the steam produced in either a fossil fuel fire mm -hmm. or a nuclear power generator. Mm -hmm. So the energy can be extracted from the steam is conveniently expressed in the term of enthalpy change across the turbine. Oh, but we also need to know the enthalpy reflects both which are thermal and mechanical energy forms in the flow process. And it is given by the sum of the equivalent thermal energy and the product of pressure times the volume. The available enthalpy change through a steam turbine increases with the temperature and the pressure of steam generator mm. and is also reduced turbine as a pressure. Oh, from your explanation, I can understand all, oh, but I'm not clear now how it function actually. Oh, it's how okay. It it's okay. Yeah. So we can see how it works there. Yeah. Steam turbine. Steam turbine operate under temperature and pressure and must be rebuilt with a great attention to detail. Steam turbine also operate by utilizing steam energy enter through the main inlet valve from a steam boiler as the steam flows through each stage of blading it expands as it transfer its energy to the rotor so each stage of blading is larger to the capture as much energy as possible after the steam pass through the turbine steam part is exalted into a condenser turn back into the condensate and return to the boiler to be made into a steam once again. The only stick are also available the rotating element or rotor is the head of the machine. Stream turbine provide complete replacement rotating assemblies as repair and replacement component for exciting rotor high coat protective. Quating are also part of diverse products. Line this quating are applied to the protect the rotating element and stationary bladding for correction, pitting and folding associated with the certain steam and operating condition complete reverse engineering and manufacturing of new steam turbine bladding is routinely. 
the rotor blade are removed and then reverse engineering utilizing a coordinate measuring machine and the latest design software the new blading is manufactured with the state of the art cnc milling machine in being subjected to the final dimensional and non-destructive testing the new blading is installed in the roto final inspection are performed and the complete assembly is balanced in operating speed balance facility to guarantee smooth railroad operation thank you i'm very clear about that how great you both of you explain to me and how about the other two ah for the other two uh, so first uh, the gas turbine turbine sorry so energy that is extracted from the fluid also can be expressed in the term of entropy change still about entalpy change. Ah, ah, because it's true, but I guess you can see the picture here. Yeah? The entalpy change, which uh, for a gas is nearly proportional, proportional. Ah, proportional. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. 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 Sorry, Okay, but most of the gas turbine engines includes three things. What's the number? Is it a lot of things? Yeah, there are three things at least: which compressor, a combustion chamber, and a turbine. These are usually mounted as a integral unit and operate as a complete prime, and it moves on a what we call open cycle where air is drawn. In from in from the atmosphere and the products of combustion finally discharge again the atmosphere. Oh, but how it works actually? Uh, just the same. Look at that. Yeah. Oh. Another one that you have to know. Oh really? Yeah. What is it? This is a wind turbine. This is the last turbine. Wind. So yeah, the energy available in wind can be extracted by wind turbine, and this is to produce electric electric power or to pump water from the wells. The wind turbines are the successor of wind mills, which were important sources. Of power from the late Middle Age through 19th century. I also prepared for you ah, how it works it was, yeah. because I know you cannot understand it without watching the video, yeah. right? Because I am kinesthetic. No, no, I'm not kinesthetic. Visualistic. Yeah. 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 So yeah. which one? Which part I want to look? You want? You want to watch it? Yeah. yeah. No, no, just, just look at me. Are you sure? Oh. Yeah. Each wind turbine has a wind vane at the top that indicates the wind direction. This allows the turbine to rotate on the tower and face the wind. The blades also rotate the axis for maximum resistance. Wind force that is the kinetic energy contained in moving air currents spin the blades. These are designed to fully capture its energy 
They can be as long as 60 meters each and are made of very light and resistant materials. This is for ease of movement. This is why they can produce energy even with the very light winds starting from about 11 km per hour with very strong winds above the 90 km per hour. The blades are placed in feather position and the turbine stops spinning for safety reasons. Wind turbine through the hub which is coupled to the low speed shaft. The low speed shaft is given this name because it spins at the same speed of the blades between 7 and 12 revolutions per minute. This is to produce electricity. It is necessary to increase the turning speed of the low speed shaft. That is the mission of the gearbox which raises the speed over a hundred times and transfers it to the high speed shaft. The high speed shaft that rotates it up to 1500 revolutions per minute is connected to a generator. The generator converts the kinetic energy into electricity and a source of energy that is easier to transport and use the electricity produced in the generator as di direct current is conducted through the interior of the tower to the banks. There are a converter transformer, it is also alternating current which is the most commonly used kind and the transformer raises the voltage for transport inside the wind farm. This is from each turbine alternating current is sent to the substation through underground cables. Here are the voltage is increased again to feed it into the power grid and transport it to end consumers. This is how we use the wind to light cities, peak industry schools or hospitals or operate our household appliances in a clean and sustainable way. Ah. And now you got it right. I got it. Yes. Yeah, so that's all for the yes, turbines. Mm -hmm. okay. It's simple, right? Can okay, you may proceed your work? I'm sorry for this. Yeah, video. it's okay. okay. It's okay. There's some work I have to research about turbine. Okay, okay. Well, thank you for the explanation. If you still need anything about turbine, then you can just ask us. If I say I need you, uh, you still I need you. Me. <laughs> Okay, the question is, we have to compare the magnitudes of change of enthalpy, change of inert energy, and change of potential energy. Okay, so we have the formula for kinetic energy, potential energy, and enthalpy. So, for, so at first, we, we look at the inlet. Uh, the information given is pressure 1 and temperature 1, which is 2 megapascal and 400 degrees Celsius. Okay, we, al we already know it's in superheated vapor so we can refer to table x6 and from it we can get the h we name it as h1 so the value is 3248.4 kilojoule per kilogram and at the outlet the information given is 15 kilopascal we know that it is in saturated liquid vapor so we can refer to table a5 and from it from the table we get the value of hf HFG and HG. Okay, the value is this. So, the form, so the the formula that we have is this. So we just substitute the value, which is HF plus this x. We get at the outlet, which is zero point nine, and the value of HFG is two three seven two point three, and we get the answer is two three. 61.01 okay to get the uh, the value of change of enthalpy we have to h2 minus h1 which is h2 this and we have to minus with the value of h1 is this so we get the value is negative it is 7.39 kilojoule over kilogram okay for kinetic energy we have the formula which is v square over 2 so to find the change of kinetic energy v2 should minus with v1 so we have the value for v2 which is 180 and v1 is 50 so we just substitute the value which is v2 180 square minus 50 square over 2 and we get the answer 14950 is in this unit so we have to change it to kg kg over kg that we have two times with one over thousand so we get the answer is 14.95 kilojoule per kilogram
Okay, now we pro we proceed to potential energy. We have the formula which is P equal to G Z. From the information given, we have the value of Z which is Z Z two is six and Z one is ten. So we just substitute the value in this formula which is G. The value of G is nine point eight one and Z two six minus ten and we get the formula the value is negative 39.24 and also we have to convert in it into kilojoule over kilogram which we will have to times by 1 over thousands and we get the answer is negative 0 0.039 kilojoule per kilogram this is the value for change of tapi change of kinetic energy and change of potential energy Okay, for question B, we have to determine the work done per unit mass of the steam flowing through the turbine. Okay, so we can use this formula which is work done is equal to negative delta H plus delta Ke plus delta Pe. Okay, why is the sign is negative? It's because for former sign convention, the heat transfer from a system and work done on the system are negative. This is, the question is already said that flowing through the turbine which is we know that it's on the system okay so from the previous question we already have the value of delta h delta ke and delta pe so we just have to substitute the value we also need to consider the negative sign so we just substitute it and we get the answer is 872.479 kilojoule over kilogram okay before question C, we have to calculate the mass flow rate of the steam. So we have the formula mass flow rate is equal to power over what done. So we already have the value of power which is 5 megawatt. We know that what is equal to J over S. So we convert it into kJ over S and we get the answer is 5000. So we can substitute the value into the formula which is the power is 5000 over what then? What then we get the answer at the previous que previous question 872.479 and we divide it and we get the answer is 5.731 kJ kilogram per second. So for the second question we need to find the pressure for the steam turbine. Given here are some of the information such as mass flow rate, temperature, velocity, pressure, power and enthalpy for part 2 of the steam turbine. The pressure we need to find is from the first part of the steam turbine. So we proceed with the answer. Here are some of the assumptions that we need to do to to simplify our calculation, this is um, m in equal to m out equal to only one mass flow rate. This is because the steam turbine only have one in and one out for the steam itself. So here, uh, I can set up the energy and thermal because of the system is insulated. The control volume is insulated. And here I can set up the potential energy for both M1 and M2 because of it is steam turbine. So proceed with the next step. Zero equal to negative W plus mass flow rate for first part and second part. Here we already uh, simplify it become only one mass flow rate enter the steam turbine. So we proceed with the calculation and make enthalpy for part 1 H1 as the subject H1 equal to work over mass flow rate plus H2 plus velocity part 2 minus part 1 over 2 and we insert all the information given and at this part we need to times uh, the velocity with 1 kilogram over 1000 gram to get uh, the unit kilojoule over kg 
So at last we will get enthalpy for part 1 is equal to 3070.7375 And to find the pressure for the first part We need to use two properties that given in question And refer to the table of properties to find the pressure at the first part So after we use uh, two properties given Like Enthalpy for part 1 and temperature for part 1 we will get pressure from the table of properties which is 0 0.02 megapascal or we can use NIST in the internet it is more simplified uh, method which is we just insert the properties given here and we will get exact, exact value for the pressure okay that's all thank you